It's time to get your checking account to zero with free checking from PenFed. That's zero ATM fees, zero balance requirements, and zero time spent waiting for your paycheck to direct deposit because you can receive it up to two days early. Open your account with just $25 and see how big zero can be. Apply online today at PenFed.org slash free checking. Early direct deposit eligibility may vary between pay periods and timing of payers' funding. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA. Why don't more infant formula companies use organic, grass-fed whole milk instead of skim? Why don't more infant formula companies use the latest breast milk science? Why don't more infant formula companies run their own clinical trials? Why don't more infant formula companies use more of the proteins found in breast milk? Why don't more infant formula companies have their own factories instead of outsourcing their manufacturing? We wondered the same thing. So we made Byheart, an infant formula company on a mission to get a lot closer to the most super, super food on the planet, breast milk. Our patented protein blend has more of the important and most abundant proteins actually found in breast milk. We're the first and only U.S. made formula to use organic grass-fed whole milk, not skim. We even conducted the largest clinical trial by a new infant formula company in a quarter century with clinically proven benefits like easier digestion, less spit up, and softer poops versus a leading infant formula. And we make our own formula in the USA and our very own factories in Iowa, Oregon, and Pennsylvania. Byheart, a better formula for formula. Learn more at byheart.com. Presenting the transcribed Egbert and Umley show with Herb Sheldon. I'm Egbert, the bookworm. I'm Umley, the steam shovel. I'm Herb Sheldon in person, so let's clap hands to the music. Well, Egbert, I suppose that you've done all your Christmas shopping, haven't you? All that I'm going to do. Why, is there more that you've got ahead of you, Egbert? Well, there is and there isn't. I've been getting a lot of presents in this past week, all marked, do not open until Christmas. And, of course, I don't. Well, what about them? I haven't the vaguest idea who they're from. And I've been buying presents for everybody I can think of. Well, I don't understand what you mean. Well, listen to her. I've gotten 37 presents in the mail, all marked, do not open until Christmas. Ah. And I've only sent out eight presents. Oh, now I get it. You figure that you should get presents for all those people who sent them to you, huh? But you can't find out who those people are yet because their packages say, do not open until Christmas. Is that it? Exactly. It certainly took you a long enough time to figure it out. Hmm. Well, don't go away, Egbert. We'll find some way out of this. You bet we will. <laughs> I just can't wait, I just can't wait, I just can't wait till Christmas. I've waited all year and it's almost here. I just can't wait till Christmas. I hope I get a huggy pet. I know that Santa won't forget my dolly and my shiny skates. I just can't wait till Christmas. I'd love to see that Christmas tree all sparkly green and silvery. And all the toys for you and me. And that's the reason why you see. I just can't wait, I just can't wait, I just can't wait till Christmas. I've waited all year and it's almost here. I just can't wait till Christmas. I just can't wait till Christmas. I just can't wait till Christmas. I just can't wait, I just can't wait, I just can't wait till Christmas. I've waited all year and it's almost here. I just can't wait till Christmas. I hope I get a huggy pet. I know that Santa won't forget my dolly and my shiny skates. I just can't wait till Christmas. I'd love to see how surprised I'll be when I look under the Christmas tree and find what Santa brought for me. And that's the reason why you see. I just can't wait. I just can't wait. I just can't wait till Christmas. I've waited all year and it's almost here. I just can't wait till Christmas. I just can't wait till Christmas.
Pretty soon, boys and girls, those of you who go to school will be on vacation again. Vacation for Christmas. I just want to remind you for Egbert, Mr. Sheldon, myself, that since you're going to have more time to play, please be careful, extra careful. Remember, at this time of year, there are a lot more dangers to watch out for than usual. I see streets, for example, that you should always cross, not only with the lights, but always, always with care. When you go sledding, only go to hills that aren't too steep and dangerous. And never, never on streets with traffic. All in all, this is going to be a lot of fun. Christmas and vacation. Keep it fun by being extra careful. Thanks. Have you figured a way out of my problem? Why, uh, well, uh, that is, uh, no, I haven't, Egbert. Uh, of course, you could open your presents before Christmas, even though they say not to. But, uh, well, you wouldn't do that, would you? I'd never do that, Herb. No siree. Even though it looks as if that's the only way out. I got 37 packages, and I only sent out eight presents. The way I figure it is, that 29 people I don't know sent me presents. And unless I find out who they are, I can't send them presents. It's as simple as all that. Now, wait a minute. Couldn't you call up some of your friends and just ask them, nice and polite, if they sent you presents? And that way, you'd not have to... Sure. Say, that's a good idea. Why don't I do just that? Now, now let me see. The first one I'll call will be Pierre. See? It's just as easy to think a little bit and come up with the right answer. If I do say so myself, that suggestion was a brilliant one. Uh, here's the phone. You can get started calling right now. Uh, while you're calling, Egbert, I'm going to play the boys and girls a story record that I think they'll like. This is the story of a bear, a little bear named Bongo. Most bears live in the forest, but Bongo lived in a circus. For he was a trained bear and could ride a bicycle, walk a tightrope, run, jump, stand on his head, dance, and do almost anything. He was the star of the show. And listen, the show is about to begin. Bongo did all kinds of tricks, and he could even sing. I'll sing you a song, oh, it's not very long, oh, or my name's not Bongo the Bear. I ride on my bike, cause that's what I like, I haven't a worry or care. 
All the other bears there are live in the woods and roam. I'd like to see just how they live, but I'm kept in my circus home. I sing and I dance, or I jump and I prance, or I do things that no one would dare. I stand on my head, you heard what I said, I'm Bongo the Circus Bear. But when the show was over, Bongo was taken back into the circus tent, put in a room with bars on the windows, and locked up until the next show. Gee whiz, I'm the star of the show, Bongo the Bear. But after it's over, they keep me locked up like a prisoner. They're afraid I'll run away. And that's just what I do. I'd like to go into the woods and see how the other bears live. Maybe if I could get the bars in this window loose, I could get away. I'll try. <coughs> <coughs> I did it! The bars came loose! I can get out! I'm free! So Bongo got his bicycle, put on his hat, climbed out the window, and rode off into the woods to see what he could find. Bongo was so happy in the woods that he ran and jumped and tried to climb a tree. He even tried to growl. And then, all of a sudden, he saw someone else in the woods. It was a pretty little girl bear, just about Bongo's size. He went right up to her to say hello. Hello, my name's Bongo. What's yours? <laughs> my name's Lulu Bell. <laughs> would you be my girl, Lulu Bell? Oh, I would like to, Bongo. But there's a great big bear who wants to be my boyfriend, and I'm afraid of him. His name is Lockjaw, and... Oh, my goodness, I think I hear him coming now. You better hide, Bongo. He doesn't like me talking to other bears. I'm not afraid. Let him come. Oh, hello, Lockjaw. This is Bongo. Hello, Lockjaw. <laughs> So your name's Bongo. Why, you little runt, I'll teach you to talk to my girl. I'll hit you so hard, you'll never get up again. But just as Lockjaw was about to hit little Bongo, Bongo jumped on his bicycle and rode around in circles so fast that Lockjaw couldn't catch him. Then Bongo rode in and out and hit Lockjaw on the stomach again and again. Pretty soon, Lockjaw was so tired chasing and grabbing at the fast little Bongo on his bicycle that he could hardly stand up anymore. Then Bongo rode in very fast, gave Lockjaw a big push, and Lockjaw fell over the edge of a hill, rolled all the way down to the bottom into a river, and floated away and was never seen again. All the other bears in the forest were very happy because they didn't like Lockjaw either. And since Bongo was a hero, they all cheered. for good, and I can be your girl. Ah, uh, that was nothing, little Bell. Oh, yes, it was. And I'm going to give you a great big kiss. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, Bongo and Lulu Bell lived happily in the forest together, dancing and playing and singing. I'll sing you a song, oh, it's not very long, oh, or my name's not Bongo the Bear. I ride on my bike, cause that's what I like, I haven't a worry or care. Now I've joined the other bears who live in the woods and roam. With Lulu Bell to be my friend, I found me a happy home. I sing and I dance, or I jump and I prance, for I like living out in the air. The ground is my bed, you heard what I said, I'm Bongo the Circus Bear. Well, Egbert, how did you make out with your telephone calls? I don't think that I should be talking to you. Now, wait a minute, why not? Why not? Why not, you ask? I'll tell you why not. 
I called up 25 of my friends, and I asked them, did you send me a Christmas present? That's a simple question. I got a simple answer. No. And furthermore, they said, just for asking, they'll never send me one. Oh, Egbert, I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. Now, I'll never get any presents from those people. And furthermore, I won't know who those extra 29 presents are from unless I disregard that label. Do not open until Christmas. And look inside to see who sent them. Oh, no, Egbert. You should never do that. No. I know it, Hurt. I know it. I'll just have to think of some other way. Mm. See you in a little while, Herb. you know all about Egbert's problems, trying to find out who sent him those presents. Yes, I do, Mr. Sheldon. And if he opens them, I suppose he'll have to open the presents that we sent him, too. Gee, I never thought of that. Well, while we're waiting, why don't I announce the winners in our What's Your Hometown-like contest? Good idea, Mr. Sheldon. Who was the first prize winner this week? Carl Willoughby of Sharon Springs, New York, has won a fabulous Ross bicycle. The Ross bicycle has all the features that boys and girls love. It's light in weight and ruggedly constructed. Your Ross bicycle will give you a youth time of safe, enjoyable bicycling. Bertha Alva Hamlet of Baldwin, Long Island, has won the new magic carpet edition of the Book of Knowledge. Twenty beautiful volumes that will arouse your curiosity on thousands of subjects and provide the answers. Its complete text and illustrations have made the Book of Knowledge the leader for over 40 years. Cheryl Johnson of Faith, South Dakota, has won the famous Betsy Wetsy doll, made by the Ideal Toy Corporation. Betsy Wetsy drinks from a bottle, cries real tears, can be given a bath, and comes complete with fresh dress, baby powder, soap, and clothespins. Betsy Wetsy is ideal. Charles Mays of Jonesboro, Tennessee, and Patricia Chetter of Hitchcock, South Dakota, have each won a set of four Magic Slate activity books by Strathmore. This completely new game tells a story as you sketch and draw. Then clean the magic slate and start over again. Donna Jean of Cooperstown, New York, wins a real vacuum cleaner for children. The Regina Electric Broom Junior. It operates on flashlight batteries and is a wonderful toy that really cleans. Charles White of Norlina, North Carolina, has won Emony's Golden Glockenspiel, which plays real music, either as a glockenspiel or as a xylophone. It has a gold and silver finish and colorful tassels, and no lessons are needed. Lynn Ballard of Marietta, Georgia, wins the 17-inch Emony toy clarinet with its own carrying case. And though the Emony clarinet is a scale model of a real clarinet, no lessons are needed. Sammy English of Snow Camp, North Carolina, has won an Emony golden trumpet. The details of this Emony trumpet were copied from real trumpets, and it comes with a music stand, a trumpet mute, and a luggage carrying case. Nora Baker of Morganton, North Carolina, wins the confusing and amusing jump-a-peg puzzle Yogo. Frank Ferrer of Tampa, Florida, has won a wonderful hobby oil painting set by Grumbacker, makers of the world's finest artist materials. Learn to paint with Grumbacker. Miriam Schaefer of New York and Myra Hoffman of Eureka, South Dakota, are each awarded the new fast-moving picture and word game Tabith. Karen Klein of Mandan, North Carolina, has won Transagram's popular Prince Valiant game, an exciting new game that gives you a chance to recreate Prince Valiant's adventure in your own way. Now, I'll read the names of the other winners in just a moment.
Now for the names of winners of the ten special prizes of beautiful three-pound selections of world-famous Barracini chocolates. Sherry Ann McClellan of Panama City, Florida. Ruth McMichael of Springfield, Oregon. William Graham of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Delano Helm of Zapp, North Dakota. Betty Watford of Hageman, New Mexico. Nyla Strum of Rame, North Dakota. Marvel and Fricking of Thunderhawk, South Dakota. Ann Kennelly of Swansea, South Carolina. Diane Kaiser of Tolstoy, South Dakota. And Robert Johnson of Frostproof, Florida. Congratulations to you all. Oh, hello there, Egbert. What's the news? Did you find out who sent you those presents? Yes, I did, Herb. And I didn't open them either. Good, I'm glad you didn't. But how did you manage? Well, they said do not open them till Christmas. And so I didn't. I just asked Pierre to open them for me. Gee, Egbert, that was a good idea. Do you have the list of names there? Yes, right here. I haven't looked at them yet. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, here it is. Oh, good. Read off the names, Egbert. There's one from Glockenspiel New Bob. One from the little man who wasn't there. One from you, Herb. One from Umley. One from Cayuga Bombast. Another one from Cayuga Bombast. There are three more from Cayuga Bombast. And there are five more from Cayuga Bombast and two more... Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's Cayuga Bombast? Who's Cayuga Bombast? I don't know either. Say, who do you suppose he is? I've never heard the name before in my life. On Christmas Eve when Santa Claus was starting on his way. He found a little puppy dog hiding in his sleigh. The little dog looked very sad and hung his little head. When Santa asked him what was wrong, this is what he said. Bow, I want a boy for Christmas. I'm unhappy all alone. My tail won't wag for joy until I get a boy. A boy that I can call my very own. Bow, I want a boy for Christmas. Just someone to love and obey. A boy to chase around the park from morning till it's dark. Every single day I want biscuits and a bowl And I hope there'll be a bone for me But what I want most of all Is a boy beneath my Christmas tree Bow, I want a boy for Christmas Any little boy will do Just as long as in his heart He's certain from the start That he wants a bow too Please, Mr. Santa Claus Can you get me a little boy? A nice little boy A boy who won't pick on me or or tie cans on my tail. A little boy who let me go to bed with him so we can snuggle up and and keep each other warm. Please, Mr. Santa Claus, any little boy, just as long as in his heart he's certain from the start that he wants a bow to
Now, isn't that the strangest thing, Omley? What's that, Mr. Sheldon? You know that Egbert was worried about finding out who sent him those presents for Christmas? Yes. What about them? Well, Egbert didn't want to open them himself, so he had Pierre do it and write down the names of the people who sent them. And do you know that 31 of those presents came from a man named Cayuga Bombast? Cayuga Bombast? Well, Egbert has never heard of Cayuga Bombast, and so he went home to look at the presents, see? Poor Cayuga. He went home to see if he could find a clue to the man through the presents that he sent to him. I wonder what he's doing now. Who, Egbert? I just told you Egbert is home looking No, at... Cayuga Bombast. I haven't seen him for... for years. Do you mean to say that you know this man, this Cayuga Bombast? Certainly, Mr. Sheldon. Cayuga and I were very good friends for quite a time. Then I lost track of him. The last time I heard about him, he was operating a dynamite factory. A dynamite factory? Sure, the reason we broke up our friendship was because he was forever sending me dynamite. It used to make me nervous. Dynamite? Nervous? Say, you don't suppose, you don't think. 31 packages, dynamite? Hey, let's get over to Egbert's place right now. Here we are, Omley. I hope that we're not too late. Knock on the door, Mr. Sheldon. Yeah. You don't suppose... Well, yeah. we'll see. Come on in. Oh. Oh, boy. Why, hello there, Herb. Omley, why did you come over here? Well, well you see, dynamite, uh, C Cayuga Bombast... Did you open those packages, the ones from Cayuga Bombast? Sure I did. Say, that Cayuga Bombast must be a strange fellow. He sent the same thing in each of those 31 packages. What did I tell you, Omley? Dynamite! We'd better all get out of here. You bet we had, Mr. Sheldon. What are you talking about? Well, you opened those packages, didn't you? The ones from Cayuga Bombay? Sure I did. And all I said, that there was the same thing in each of them. Well, wasn't it dynamite? No, nah, there was a jelly bean in each one of those packages. And, oh yes, in the last one is a note for Omley. A note for Omley? Gee, let me see it. It says, Dear Umley, I'm no longer in the dynamite business. I now make jelly beans. Cayuga jelly beans. Thanks for all the free publicity. Eat Cayuga jelly beans. And it's signed, Cayuga Bombast. <laughs> oh, Umley, Egbert. <laughs> <laughs> A jelly bean, anyone? <laughs> boys and girls, they say curiosity killed the cat. But I'm awful glad that when Egbert opened those packages, all he found was jelly beans. It looks right now as if our time was about up. And so until next week at the same time, this is Herb Sheldon saying, a transcribed so long for myself, and our director with the plaid nose, Ken McGregor. And Egbert, too. Umly also. So long. Let's clap hands to the music. Today, enjoy your serenade to romance over most NBC radio stations.
Discover, this is Daniela. Hi, it's Jennifer Coolidge. I just want to thank you for making me feel so special. I earned cash back on debit for my dinner party groceries. That's great. But with Discover Cashback Debit, we give everyone cash back on everyday purchases. Anything else I can help you with? Do you like asparagus and mushroom sorbet? I've got leftovers. Introducing Discover Cashback Debit, a checking account with cash back. It pays to discover. Eligibility in terms at discover.com slash cashback debit. Discover Bank, member FDIC. Heading downtown to a museum, sporting event, show, or for holiday shopping? Plan ahead for the Red Line service changes starting Monday, December 18th through Saturday, December 30th. Free shuttle buses will replace trains between DuPont Circle and Gallery Place. For more detailed information and travel alternatives, call 202-637-7000 or visit wmata.com, W-M-A-T-A.com.